Hi, I'm Wendy from Shiny Happy World, and this cute red panda block is the current pattern in the Funny Faces Quilt Block of the Month Club. When I say current, it is April 1st, 2022, and this pattern is going to be exclusive to the club for the entire month of April. And then sometime at the end of May, it'll be available in the shop at shinyhappyworld.com if you want the pattern but don't want to join the club. Uh, here's how to make it. Okay, I've got my light box turned on. I've got my numbered pattern piece laying, laid down on the light box. And I've got a clear silicone sheet over top of that. I've got a longer video that walks you through all the details about how to use a light box, but just there's a nutshell of what we've got. Now I'm gonna layer all the pieces on and I'm gonna do it in order of the way the pieces are numbered. Remember, if you need to, you can always do them out of order, like you could do the muzzle piece separately, fuse that, and then layer it on, like put the nose on the muzzle, put the inner ears on these ears, fuse them, and then treat them like individual pieces. But I don't think I'm gonna have trouble seeing through any of these pieces. That's something you would normally do if there's gonna be a lot of layers built up and the, um, the original picture wouldn't show through very well. But I think this is gonna be pretty straightforward. So we're gonna start with the shoulders and just get them lined up at the bottom there. All right, then we're gonna start with the ears. So number two is the first of the larger outer ears. Line that up. And you can see I've got some pencil lines drawn on here. That's because I'm also going to do a tutorial showing how to do this without the light box. But for you guys, just ignore those pencil lines except for one spot, and I will point that out when we get to it. So this is the second ear. Now we're gonna do the inner ears. And you can still see very clearly where that goes. Man, I love using a light box for this. I can't believe I went so long without using one of these. It is such a handy tool. And I am all about whatever makes this super fun. So next up is number six, that is the head piece. And we'll just lay that right where it goes. And again, just ignore the chalk lines that are on there. So number seven, is this eyebrow over here. Sometimes you do, um, the, the piece with the fusible, it wants to bow up a little bit, but if you push down on it so it's sitting right on the thing, you can, the, it makes the light shine through it better. And number eight is the other eyebrow. And then nine and 10, we'll go ahead and put his eyes on. And 11 and 12 are his little, the white patches on his cheeks. And number 13 is his muzzle, little snout. Now this one is the only one that you're gonna wanna transfer at least the mouth line. So even though you're using the light box, you're gonna wanna transfer the mouth because you need that line not for placement, but for stitching. So you're either gonna stitch over that line or you can just leave it with the, uh, with the Sharpie, which is what I use to draw on them. And then the last piece is the nose. So if you're using the light box, the only lines of all of those placement lines that you do need to transfer, that you do need to trace through from the back is that mouth line. And you can do that on the light box. So you could do, I, I should have shown you that, but you would just flip it over and just trace that really quickly. And now he is all ready to fuse down. So I'm gonna, slide this silicone sheet off, take it over to the ironing board, 
fuse it down right on top of that silicone sheet and then peel it off and I have uh, uh, the entire body put together. It becomes one giant iron-on patch that I can then fuse onto the block. All right, here is the Red Panda, all finished, and uh, I've done all of the outlining on it. Uh, if I forget to mention it, people always ask, so here's the rundown on the fabrics. All of the fabrics for the face are designed by me. These are part of the Animal Kingdom Blenders collection, so all of these come from that. And the background block, it has the quilting lines actually printed on it, so you just follow the lines when you do your quilting. That is from the Gemstones collection, and there's um, background blocks in darks, mediums, and lights from that collection. So you could go really dark to very pastel. This is from the darks collection, but I've done it in a few other colors as well. So Turning Red just recently came out on Disney Plus and I loved it. And so I've done a block that is less realistic colors. Like this block is very realistic colors for a red panda. This block is more the colors that they used in the movie. It was brighter orange and also red pandas have a black chest and belly and actually the fronts of their arms are black as well. But in the movie, she had um, an orange, fully orange body and also her inner ears, instead of just being slightly dark gray or slightly darker white, the, the outside of the ears are white with a little bit of darker shading in the middle. In the movie, they gave her just a lighter shade of orange inside her ears. So this isn't trying to look exactly like May from the movie, but if you liked the movie and are making a red panda inspired by that, you can do red panda colors like May from the movie. And the fabrics on this, so the whites are all from the Animal Kingdom blenders, just like um, in this version, and all of the bright oranges are from the Gemstone Blenders collection. These are all tourmalin, shades of tourmalin, which is a reddish orange. And the background block is also from the Gemstones collection. This is uh, from the emerald, and this is the medium colored blocks. And I'm just realizing looking at this, I think I ran out of thread, um, so I need to go back and quilt a couple of lines on there. So I've got other colors too. Here's another version in pretty realistic colors. This uses the Warm Neutral Batiks bundle. I will tell you that the batiks are a little bit harder to see through if you're using the light box, so just be aware of that. And then the background block is from the Muted Rainbow fabric bundle. And I just really like how that turned out. And I've got one more. So I'm doing a really uh, playful collection that have the that are, that are using more black and white prints. So everywhere that uh, a red panda is white, I used a black and white print that is almost all white. And everywhere that an actual red panda shades a little bit darker, I just went um, again, black and white, but a little bit darker in there. And I did this one without the shoulders. So instead of looking like a photograph where that's just gonna be cropped there, it looks more, it's more emoji style with a floating head. But if I had decided to do a, the normal way that I do it with the, with the shoulders in there, this is the fabric that I would have used. So also a black and white print, but here where a red panda is very dark, I would have chosen a print like this one that is mostly black. So lots of different options, fun things you can play with. You can do an emoji style floating head with almost any of my patterns. Most of my patterns have the head separate from the shoulders and you can do that emoji style floating head just by leaving the shoulders piece out. So that are that is a set of variations. Oh, I forgot to mention. So the blacks and whites are from the black and white fabric bundles. This is from the Dots fabric bundle. I just love this print. And this dark, this purple um, batik block is from the rainbow, the batik rainbow fabric bundles. So that's all the fabrics that I've done, um, all of the different variations with shoulders, without shoulders, all kinds of fun that you can have with this pattern. So again, it's the red pattern, red panda current pattern in the Funny Faces Quilt Block of the Month Club for April, 2022. I'm Wendy from Shiny Happy World, and I'll see you next time.